Hello everybody, thank you for checking out today's video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you all how to retrieve records using REST API Explorer on ServiceNow. Now, before we get started with the actual uh, API Explorer, you want to actually go ahead and figure out how you want to authenticate your API on ServiceNow. Now, there's a few different ways that you can do it. The way that I did it is uh, probably the least secure of the options. <laughs> um, but what I did is I created a user. So I just created a user on ServiceNow. It's you know just a, a system account. I'm not gonna be logging into it or anything. I'm just using it for authentication for the API. And depending on what is required on your instance to be able to read from the various tables that you're trying to pull into your API, um, you need to grant those roles. So for my PDI, I need, needed to grant this user the ITIL role. And then I also needed to grant them the, where are you at, where are you at? Uh, REST API Explorer role. And between those two roles, you see it inherited a bunch of other roles. And after I did that, um, you also need to set a password. So make sure you set your password because when you authenticate on Postman or whatever software that you're using for your APIs, um, you need to be able to authenticate using the user ID and the password. And again, this is just one way to authenticate your APIs. There's, there's other ways as well. Okay, so now that we have that user made, let's go ahead and search for REST, oops, REST API Explorer in the All Applications menu. Okay, and you see once you click on it, it's gonna bring up this API Explorer, uh, which you would call it my uh, helpful, GUI. <laughs> um, so from here, what we'll do is we just want to go ahead and select the table that we're trying to pull into the API. So let's just use the incident table as an example. Okay, so we have our incident selected. And then these are the different parameters. So you can see off to the side, the different descriptions. So this is an encoded query string used to filter the results. Now, the way that you can get a coded query string, or at least the easiest way, is let's open up our incident list view here. And let's say that we just wanted um, active is true. So what you could do is you'd go ahead and copy query, and come over here, and then that is the encoded query. Now, if you were adding in a ton of different conditions, this encoded query would be very long. Um, you would see carrots and all sorts of things going on there. But if we just wanted active as true, that's all we had to do. Now this one for the display value return it does, it does exactly what it sounds like returns field display values true actual values false or both all um, by default it's false so we'll select true because we want the display values um, and then you know you guys could go through these it was kind of a lot so what we're going to focus on now is the fields so these are the different fields that we want to bring into our API now you need to know the name of the field so. I know a lot of them offhand, but just wanted to show you guys how to retrieve those yourself. I don't know why I opened up another one when I had the tab still open. Okay, so let's come over to the form and let's just start looking at some different fields we wanna bring in. So let's say we want number. So when you right-click number, um, you'll see right here, number within the quotes, that is the field name. That is what we're gonna need to put in here. So this was right here. So let's put number and make sure you separate it using a comma. Say we also want the caller. So this is caller ID, caller underscore ID. Okay, and let's say we want short description. So that's gonna be short underscore description. And you can see it's right here. So those are the three fields that we want to bring into our, oops, API. All right, and this is your sysparm limit. Um, it doesn't want you to run a gazillion results on here and freeze the page. So it limits you to one or 10. And again, there's some other options here that you can look into, but I'm not going to uh, focus on those right now. This is really all we need just to kind of give you guys an idea of how this works. So next thing we'll do is let's go ahead and hit send. Okay. And you can see that it's pulling in some different results here. So you see, we got our short description, we got our number, and we got our caller ID. And the display value, you can see that here, Charlie Witherspoon. Cool. 
All right, so next thing that we're gonna do, um, also, if you need to know how to be able to pull this API into um, different types of scripts, uh, scripting programming languages like Python, Ruby, um, they have some examples here how to do that. All right, but let's say we wanna pull this into like Postman, for example. So what you would wanna do is you'd wanna take this URL, your git URL, and let me bring up my Postman. Okay, so you can see I already had it open, but uh, what you would do is you would paste your um, REST API Explorer URL here. Ensure that you have the Git selected and not one of these other ones. Okay, and then you can come over to, these are the different parameters that we're pulling in. So actually let me update this because mine is different than the one that's currently on Postman. Okay, so let's send. All right, so we pulled in 10 results, um, but yeah, these are the different parameters that we pulled in. Right now we're only pulling in 10 results, but if you want to um, remove this, if you want to pull in all of the results, you can. Or maybe you want 50, um, you could put that here. Um, the different fields, so you could add in different fields here as well if you want. Um, what else we got? Display value is true. Now, if you were to add in these other parameters, they would have added them to the API URL, and we would have seen those as parameters on Postman. But you see, we only have, um, what, three or four. So that's why we only have four parameters right here. Okay. And you saw I hit send. And if you want to authenticate, um, you would just go to authorization and select basic auth. And then you would put in the user ID for that um, REST API users that we looked at at the beginning of the video and the password for that account. And then uh, you should be able to authenticate that way. I'm not gonna click on that because then you'll see my password, even though it's for um, a development instance, I'd rather not show that. Okay, so after we hit send, um, we have our 10 different results, our 10 different um, incidents, incidents that we pulled in, they're active as true. Now, obviously there's gonna be quite a bit you probably wanted to specify something, uh, specify it a bit more to get more accurate results here, but it just pulled in 10 results. And I'm not sure if it pulled in um, the, the first 10 that showed up, but uh, that's what we're seeing here. Okay, so that is a, a quick overview of REST API Explorer and then how to carry that over into a program like Postman. And then from there, you know, you guys can decide what you want to do with those. Uh, that information that you're bringing in through the API. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing to the channel. Catch you all in the next video very soon.